In light of recent Boeing controversies and the 2024 appropriations bills not getting passed, other big-name aerospace companies like NASA, BAE Systems, and Lockheed Martin are going to be laying off thousands of employees across America. But it's not just aerospace being affected, as the tech and gaming sectors and even certain retailers are revving up to close down locations and lay off employees over the next month. Now, I've been researching and teaching about the job market since 2017, and when I tell people that, something that often comes up is their anxiety about layoffs. So today, I wanna pay homage to my username and talk about layoffs. Specifically, what layoffs are coming in the near future, how you can know if layoffs are about to affect you, and what you can do about it, including ways to find layoff-proof jobs within volatile industries. It's a lot to go over, so please be sure to like this video and subscribe if you are new, and let's get right into it. If you've seen the headlines, you know some big names are laying off a lot of people next month. Tesla just announced that they're laying off 10% of their entire workforce after bad quarterly sales. I even saw that Google was laying people off this morning in a response to AI concerns. Beloved media company Rooster Teeth just announced that they're laying off hundreds of people at their Texas locations following their announcement that they will soon be shutting down. And even all reliable UPS is laying off thousands of workers on on the American East Coast. Now, these layoffs might sound a little confusing to those of you who have been paying attention to economic commentary. Everyone from NPR to Investopedia to the Federal Reserve are saying that the US is about to have a soft landing from potential recession. And as an economist by training myself, I look at that commentary and... I don't care. The overall state of the economy does not change the fact that tens of thousands of Americans are about to lose their jobs. And it does not change the fact that people in my age bracket don't have any socioeconomic upward mobility in the current job market. So for the average person, your concern should not be how the overall economy is doing, but whether or not layoffs are going to impact you or those you care about, as well as what you can do to protect yourself as you're advancing your career. So let's talk about the WARN Act. The Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act was enacted by the 100th US Congress in 1988. It basically requires any company with over 100 employees to give 60 days of advance notice before they perform any layoffs. There was a lot of purple back then. And so the WARN Act went into law and is still in effect to this day. And so every single US state publicly provides lists of companies that are going to have layoffs over the next 60 days. This includes both public and private companies across all sectors. The easiest way to find this information is to simply type in WARN Act your state name, and then that will show you those upcoming layoffs for the next 60 days. Also, I've been trying to find a national version of this and not just state by state WARN Act report, so if anybody knows where I can find this, please let me know in the comments below. I desperately want to access that. But for now, we gotta look at the state versions. Most states will give you a downloadable CSV file, which is just nerd speak for an Excel spreadsheet, that shows you different information about companies having layoffs. Where they're located, the name of the company, how many employees will be affected, even what county they're in, and what date those layoffs are going to happen. And so you, as an employee, can look this up not just for your state, but in other states where your company has a major presence. You know, just because you live in Arizona doesn't mean that you're safe if one of your company's factories in Texas closes down. That can give you a bit of context about what's going on with your organization broadly. And this isn't me trying to fear monger, it's just more me encouraging you to empower yourself with information, that way you can know what's coming up in the near future, and you can take effective next steps in order to protect or advance your career. So the first thing you can do is dust off your resume and please make sure that it is ATS friendly so that you can start applying to jobs right now. They say that the best time to find a new job is when you don't need one and your company may or may not be offering severance if they lay you off. And if they don't offer you severance, you may or may not qualify for unemployment checks. In fact, back in 2020, I was actually laid off 
three times immediately after finishing grad school. And it wasn't until I got to that third company where I was offered any type of severance. And so after that first layoff, I basically worked at companies two and three out of desperation because I needed money fast. But once I was laid off from that third company, I was given a severance check for six months worth of pay, and that allowed me time to really kind of get my stuff together and apply to a job that was more in line with my own career interests. And the crummy thing too was that I only got that severance check from the third company after a <coughs> lawsuit, so... But look, getting laid off without any money lined up is not a good time, and I don't want this to happen to you. But I also understand that industry layoffs are really stressful, especially in tech, because there's that fear that if everyone in your industry is laying people off, that you then won't be able to go to a competitor or another related company because they're also laying people off and are therefore not hiring. So if that's the position that you're in, I would really like to encourage you to consider doing the same category of work that you're already doing in a different industry. It's something that I've said a million times, but I'm going to say again. There is no reason why you need to go work for a tech company just because you have a degree in computer science. The Forest Service needs software engineers. Nonprofits need webmasters. Heck, even public schools need IT professionals who work there. And so there may be opportunities for you that leverage your skill set in different industries that you aren't even considering. Personally, I actively sought out out higher ed after getting laid off three times because I knew that I would have much better benefits and a lot more job security and flexibility by working at a university than I would have working at a private company. And so sure, I'm making less money right now than I would be in the private sector, but again, those benefits are amazing. I get to travel a lot and I also get to teach, which is something that I am super passionate about but wasn't necessarily able to do in my previous kind of career life because I didn't have a degree in secondary education. And so it's a pretty sweet gig. And it's a gig that like not a lot of my peers were considering when we were getting master's degrees in economics. But at the end of the day, you need to do what works best for you. I release new videos on job market topics every single week. So if you got something out of this video, then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. I would highly recommend watching another video that I made a few months ago where I broke down all of the best statistics that we have about the current state of the 2024 job market. I will see you over there.